Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Today is Monday, July 10th, 2023. Failure of our Lord. Hopefully everybody is doing absolutely fantastic wherever you happen to be on this great planet of ours and whatever platform you happen to be watching the show on. Whew, we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, it's been an interesting week. Today's stream, we are going to go over the weekly charts of some of our most promising and interesting cryptocurrencies, take a glance at what happened over the weekend, and look at what trades are on the horizon for this upcoming week. As always, before we begin, if you want to support the stream, you can do so with a simple subscribe, like, or share on whatever platform you happen to be watching us on. You have no idea how much your efforts to help grow the show really do contribute to us continuing to grow. So it's been fantastic and an amazing ride. And if you guys want to get involved with the community, make sure to join our Discord. Links down in the description to everything you could possibly need in life, including where you can copy trade me on Fairdesk, as well as a link to my free guide, The Five Mistakes Holding You Back from Profitable Trading. And with all of that out of the way, as they say, let's get right down to it. Let me get my OBS pulled up over here and we'll get right into, we'll get right into the charting. Uh, okay, I think that is acceptable. Let me just get this a little smaller. Okay, excellent. Uh, we're going to start off on the weekly time frame as we are wont to do with uh, BTC. And the last significant real play, of course, came down on the daily time frame. We were analyzing this head and shoulders pattern that was forming in this consolidation zone of Bitcoin. Uh, we've seen a little bit of change since then. Shout outs, MT Coiner, Alex81SG, by the way, in the chat. Happy Monday to you guys. It is Money Monday, so we are going to be identifying what asset to put into our portfolio, whether we're adding uh, a position or just adding to a position that we currently have. Uh, I'm thinking Litecoin. Uh, with the happening and Litecoin's been performing well for us. So just continuing to lead into strength, but uh, we will see where we're at uh, at the close of um, uh, at the close of all of our, our weekly analysis here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this off for visibility off the weekly time frame. Everything that had to do, excuse me, with the head and shoulders pattern, because that was a daily pattern. And although we did get... Um, uh, price coming close to the target that we talked about, 23.4K. Uh, we didn't quite get there. I think the lowest we got was 24.8 on this last dive down before this big uh, expansive up movement right back to the top of the range. And currently on the daily time frame, we see ourselves just consolidating. So just right out of the gate, I think the most important things to discuss or the kind of the easiest no-brainer trades is we've had a very bullish 2023. Uh, the trend is your friend until the trend bends. All right, so watching for breakouts of this resistance level is of course kind of a no-brainer, uh, do less profit more type trade, just watching for this breakout of 32K. I think we could easily get to 36K on that impulsive move there, and then we'll just kind of analyze and see where we're at once we get there. Uh, the other option is, of course, as we are seeing some of our, we were seeing some of our metrics tick down, but everything's looking relatively positive. Of course, the other trade that people are going to be considering is that this is a double top. We are potentially going to be having a drawdown for the last half of 2023 as individuals talk about a potential interest rate hike coming later this month, everything that's going on in that regards. Uh, and of course, just the overall large cycle that we've plotted out many times before. So since 2016, this is what Bitcoin's done every four years, basically. We have a beautiful rally that takes us to a new all-time high. We have a long protracted bear market that concludes with a violent capitulation event. We consolidate for a little bit, and then we go on a pretty face-melting rally, but nothing compared to nothing compared to what will be in store for the subsequent rally. But after that face melting rally off the bear market low, uh, we do sell off and we sell off for quite a while. As you'll notice here, this is exactly what we did in 2019. Uh, we sold off into the better part of 2020 March. And then that final last movement down was culminated with the March meltdown, another kind of capitulation event where we went low, but not as low, not lower than the previous bear market low. So if that cycle were to play out again, notice that we have rallied powerfully off the bottom. This is potentially our double top that will conclude this expansion cycle of 2023. Uh, where we end out the year with this down movement down to 19 or 20,000, maybe even 18,000. Uh, but I doubt we will go lower than 15,000 because we have not done that all the way going back to 2016. 
uh, really 2015 in that year, but I, I digress. Uh, so again, those are the two big things that we have on the weekly time frame. Let's put on our trend following charts. Look at our trend following indicators. Uh, you will notice that we are reaching resistance in the form of the bearish Kumo cloud. Again, we've rallied after a large divergence away from uh, from our Kumo cloud. Uh, we are trading above pretty much all major moving averages at this point. However, we are not really in that explosive euphoric area of the bull market yet. Uh, we would be above the Kumo cloud and we would typically be far away from our moving averages. For example, let's just look over at the two tops that concluded the bull market back in 2021. Uh, this nice double top before the bear market. You'll notice that price was above both clouds and we were also quite a ways away from any significant moving averages. Uh, and when you get that uh, when you get that distance, uh, moving averages are great. They're one of the best tools that a trader can utilize. It all depends on how you utilize them. But one of my favorite ways to identify kind of overextended or overbought areas is just simply seeing what is the percentage distance we are away from our major moving average that we are using to the to direct what the general trend of the market is, all right? And individuals will trade utilizing moving averages different ways. The way I like to primarily utilize a moving average in my trading strategy is as a baseline where it gives me trend direction at a glance. What is my trend bias? Should I be long or should I be short? That is the information uh, that a well-tuned uh, trader can, or excuse me, a well-tuned baseline or moving average that it can give to a trader at a glance. Simply, uh, is price either above or below the moving average, or what is the angle of the moving average? Is the moving average sloping up? Bullish, is it sloping down? Bearish, and that gives you your bias, your direction in which to trade. You know, finding entries is another challenge, but simply knowing which direction to trade in will save you so much frustration with your trading activities. So uh, we do have that, uh, we do have that, um, lack of divergence. We're not very far away from our major moving averages here. Uh, so in that sense, we can't, there's not a ton of credence to say that, oh, we're so overextended that the price must come down. What goes up must come down. Now, typically I do like to see consolidation at a form of resistance or support if I am angling to trade for continuation. If price comes down to support and consolidates there, it typically will go down through the support. If price reaches resistance and consolidates there, it will typically go up through support. Uh, either way, uh, a break of the Kumo cloud right here would set up an edge-to-edge -edge trade. An edge-to-edge -edge trade is when you pierce into the Kumo cloud and then you trade all the way to the other side, all right? If that were to occur, that would give us, again, that nice 25% movement up to about 39. I had said 36. So 36 is pretty conservative. A break of 32 could potentially take us up almost to 40 and complete this edge-to-edge -edge trade. Uh, not significant. So continuing on with that, not significant volume coming in. Uh, we haven't really seen an increase in volume, which, uh, uh, however, exchange volume momentum as a, uh, as a fundamental on-chain metric has recovered somewhat. So we are seeing again, positive exchange volume momentum, as well as new address momentum. Uh, these are two very important and critical on-chain metrics that I track, which simply lets us know is the Bitcoin network being utilized more is is our, our use of the of the network growing, which is typically associated with uh, increases of capital, uh, inflows of capital, and, and rising prices. Uh, whereas a declining metric uh, for both of those generally indicates a bearishness. Those things were getting a little bearish as we had this uh, we had this kind of early summer slump or kind of late spring slump. Uh, and now that we're in the full swing of summer, those metrics are improving and kicking up. So overall, uh, since the trend is our friend and prices have been quite bullish, uh, I am biased to believe that this does continue to the upside. Uh, a nice trigger, again, just a simple trigger for any trader out there looking for that swing trade is just simply either that daily or maybe four hour close above 32,000, I think would be a fine trigger, a fine trade entry signal. Of course, use this in combination with your other technical indicators or your own trading strategy, I think is good. But this is a pretty no brainer trade break, you know, consolidation at resistance. If we break up into the Kumo cloud, if we just break above this level of resistance here, continuing to climb up fueled by the rally of the bull market. Uh, and again, breakdown of this level, potentially pullbacks down here to 26. So breakdown of 29, prices to 26, breakup of 32, prices to 36, potentially even 40 if we do complete that edge-to-edge -edge trade. All major moving averages are sloping up gently. And again, as I said earlier, we don't have a big divergence away from our moving averages. So this is 
Uh, this is nothing too crazy here. Uh, looking at our reversal system, uh, nothing too insane here. We are not trading above the Bollinger Band, so we're not really that overextended. Same um, same kind of methodology or philosophy there as we were talking about with our percentage distance away from our moving averages. When we are trading above the Bollinger Bands, we're trading above one standard deviation of price uh, or potentially two standard deviations in this case. Yeah, two standard deviations of price. Uh, we typically will get reversals, uh, which is why the Bollinger Bands can be so helpful in identifying uh, areas to fade breakouts uh, or buy dips when prices are trading below or above two standard deviations away from the mean. Uh, and of course, the 20 period simple moving average does represent the mean for the Bollinger Band indicator. Uh, notice also that we are a little bit overbought uh, on our momentum oscillator. Uh, we are at about, uh, what are we at? About 41.55 is, uh, again, I have, my, I have my first overbought metric here at 55 for Minx. Uh, this is Isospot, which is just a variation of Minx. Um, and that's generally a good area. Um, again, just kind of nice double top. Maybe even you might notice just a slight tint of regular bearish divergence here. Uh, price made a higher high. However, our oscillator is making a slightly lower high, uh, which generally is indication of, of weakness. It's not extreme, uh, but of course, this will just be another thing that in hindsight, we look back on and if price dumps, and we're like, well, of course, you saw that regular bearish divergence. Like, how oh, couldn't you take that? Uh, we're not significantly overheated or overbought from the viewpoint of the CM Laguerre PPO indicator either. So uh, although we do have uh, reasons, of course, to, to consider this move bearish, of course, potential double top and the knowledge that uh, cyclically we must have a pullback, a uh, pretty extreme pullback prior to the full send of 2024, 2025. Uh, that's, there's really nothing from a technical perspective that looks very, very bearish right now, right? We are holding at resistance. We are consolidating at resistance. Uh, we've had a bullish year and so we don't really see any evidence to the contrary. So overall, I am of a mood that this does continue to the upside, but again, just simply watching for those breaks of 32 breakdowns of uh, 29, I think are, are good triggers for, for both movements here. Okay. So that's the weekly perspective. Looking for continuation on the daily time frame, we do have the Bollinger Bands beginning to tighten up quite a bit, uh, which is our indication that volatility is dropping down and low volatility precedes high volatility. Low volatility precedes breakouts. Uh, so we're seeing this consolidation. And as the Bollinger Bands continue to get squeezed, as this range continues to just meander along, uh, the range will get tighter and tighter and eventually Bitcoin will break. And typically the idea or philosophy of any breakout traders you just simply trade in the direction of the breakout uh, breakout traders typically will not fade movements um, so we are just looking to trade uh, affirmatively or positively in the direction of the breakout which is exactly the strategy that i outlined earlier on the daily time frame we are also not extremely overbought or oversold of course we kind of came up here and consolidated closer to overbought than oversold of course and prices uh, excuse me our momentum oscillator is uh swooping back down a little bit but um, nothing, nothing really significant here. I'm just simply watching for that breakout. And since we are in the range, of course, on lower time frames, uh, you can range trade. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's see here. Daily time frame as far as trending status goes. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So again, we were we had a nice bit of daily divergence away from our major moving averages. Here's that same Kumo edge to edge trade that I kind of talked about. It's not perfect because we do consolidate uh, inside the upper boundary of the Kumo cloud here once we descend into it. And there's even a fake out. But then, of course, we do complete the edge to edge trade uh, and then another edge to edge trade right here. So again, on the daily time frame, things are even more bullish. We do have a daily Kumo cloud breakout right here. Uh, we do have the Tenkan-san leading line, which is just caught up with price, as well as the 20 period, excuse me, uh, what do we got? That's the 21 period exponential moving average. So again, price is looking relatively bullish here. From a trending perspective, we do have, of course, a bullish trend. Unfortunately, we do have falling volume as well. Uh, that is the trend of falling volume. Now, I will say that moving into a range uh, as prices consolidate prior to a breakout, it is not uncommon to see falling volume uh, because 
there's just less traders. This is this is like a nice trade of price. And you see these kind of outsized, ridiculous uh, volume bars coming on Bitcoin and other and, and cryptocurrencies uh, at, at weird places. Again, you know, when everybody is when when everybody is buying or selling in unison right here. So on this candle, there is, of course, a lot of buying from retail and, of course, a lot of unloading, I think, from uh, from market makers and institutional investors here. And we say that term institutional investors like too much, I think, like. I'm just talking about larger pocketed Bitcoin traders, of course. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so again, just gearing up for a breakout, looking for that next big move. Uh, four hour time frame, uh, looking like we might get some continuation or follow up to the upside. Again, we dipped our, our toes down here into the oversold areas here on the four hour time frame. And again, price has made three now attempts uh, to break above this level of resistance at about 30,300. Uh, and we are now kind of charging up toward that. Notice the volatility is beginning to tighten up a little bit here on the four hour time frame as well. Uh, hourly time frame. Again, we had a push up above the Bollinger Bands, a quick reversal. Uh, and I was actually looking at shorting this, but I chose not to. So I'm more inclined to be looking for this uh, trade to the upside here uh, for my day trades today. And again, just nice double bottom, push back up to the top of the range, brief pullback. And so now I'm just looking to trade this breakout above 30,300, give or take. I do know that price is above 30,300 right now, but I want to see a nice convincing close uh, back up above here would be good. Again, also not overbought. So that's leading a little bit more credence here. Uh, 30 minute time frame, again, getting a little overheated, but I think that uh, when, of course, when prices are trending up, we can continue to be overbought or overextended as much as possible. So nothing too crazy coming in here. All right. So again, yeah, we do have things kind of giving us the warning signs down here on the lower time frames. But again, we have to take that with a grain of salt and look at really what's happening on the daily. On the daily, we're at the bottom of the range. Uh, and of course, we are more bullish than bearish in this range. So again, looking for opportunities to take price to the upside. So very interesting possibility here. I think we will get either a nice juicy breakout trade. Of course, the faders are also going to have something here too. Uh, if your strategy is fading breakouts, then you are coming up on a juicy looking position. I must say so myself. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much Bitcoin in a nutshell out of the way. Uh, we are going to be watching and kind of angling for a good opportunity to take this trade today. This will be my first day trade today. Uh, first trade of the week. Um, Uh, not sentiment. We want to see. Yeah, so we're just going to be patient here and watch and see what happens with this potential breakout. I do want to trade long, uh, but. Yeah, this is starting to look pretty good. I do think that we will we will go in here uh, and anticipate this breakout of price. Okay. So, point eight four three BTC position. And we'll just see how that goes. Maybe a uh, pullback prior to the push-up. These things happen. But you just kind of have to identify your opportunities and take them. Here we go. Uh, we are not going to be greedy here. So just simply looking for... Oh, I think 3470 is probably fair here. Thirty-four seventy. Okay. With that out of the way, we are going to continue on with our weekly analysis. Uh, Juice Choice says long 100x. Just 7x, my friend, but yes, we are long. 
Um, Alex81 says, volume looks dead since March. Uh, it is because that's the Binance chart and they used to have zero fees until a while ago. Yeah, I, I do think that's a, this is another thing with crypto trading. And, and I actually talked about this on Friday where it is interesting that we're not looking at aggregated volume data. Uh, and in fact, that might be, uh, that might actually be a, an indicator to make uh, and ag I'm, I'm sure one exists, but I always like making my own tools. An aggregated volume indicator across Bitcoin markets. Of course, we can look at Glassnode data in that way, but uh, it's not as intuitive, I think. I do prefer, of course, to have it on my own chart while I'm trading. It gives me more data, more actionable information, like right here in the moment, especially if I'm day trading, for example, which I am right now. Um, but yeah, like we had a big explosion of... Uh, we had a big explosion of volume on Binance, and that's because they introduced the zero fees. Uh, and so I think on the very day that they launched zero fee trading on spot BTC USDT, uh, I mean, it was like one of the largest volume signatures on, on, on Bitcoin USDT that we'd ever seen on Binance. But it was simply because everybody now had the opportunity to, uh, to, to do basically any kind of um, a stable coin to Bitcoin swap that they wanted. Uh, and so uh, you're saying that they got rid of the zero fees and that's why we've seen a die down of volume. Uh, that's that's definitely possible. You know, of course, we could also speculate that the reason we're seeing a drop down in fees or excuse me, a drop down in fees, a drop down in volume on Binance is because uh, maybe some users are leaving the platform in fear of the regulatory action against Binance. Speaking of which, of course, I think there's been a lot of there. There's, so there's been the Wall Street Journal put out an article last week talking about, by the way, let me switch over to. Um, uh, here. So the Wall Street Journal put out an article last week talking about how Binance executives are fleeing. I like they're losing seven key executives. And the Wall Street Journal is kind of spinning this as the walls are closing in on Binance. I, I, I absolutely don't understand this and, and i'm not sure why people are buying this so a couple like big things here first off binance is not an american entity so it's very unclear what jurisdiction the department of justice has uh, and it's also unclear exactly what if any effect they're going to be able to have on binance's international operations which are the lion's share of I mean, basically all of their corporate profits and revenue come from their international operations, not from Binance US. Um, all Binance US is is a um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's like a like a franchise uh, situation. BAM Trading, which is an American company, runs Binance US and they just pay Binance for the privilege of utilizing their branding. OK, so that's all that's happening. So Binance is getting a, a pittance from BAM Trading just you know and it's smart because that is allowing them to have uh that is allowing them to to have a presence in america so to speak but i digress so yeah so i don't think again i just don't think binance is going anywhere um because you know and again we might see we do have some historical precedent for this right so uh, if y'all have been here for a while, you will likely, of course, be familiar with the Bitfinex exchange. And back in twenty, back when I got involved in cryptocurrency, Bitfinex was a behemoth, very much like uh, Binance is today. And Bitfinex, after a couple of hacks and after cracking down on some things and changing things significantly, um, you know, Bitfinex just lost market share uh, to Binance, okay? But it, it wasn't just because of those things. It wasn't just because Bitfinex had lost a lot of trust. It was also because, and I just want to be very clear about this, all right? And I don't want to be seen as a Binance shill. I don't even use Binance. But Binance brought, like Binance improved the game so much, okay? The user experience for most exchanges in 2016 was not great. OK, like obviously we'd come a long way since Mt. Gox, let's say, but the user experience was not that fantastic uh, for cryptocurrency users. Binance came in and Binance's platform was so clean and smooth uh, and so easy to use that that they that all other exchanges almost immediately began losing market share to Binance because Binance was just simply a better platform. 
Because of this, other platforms had to adopt and copy Binance or get just completely kicked out of the game. Binance has elevated the game so much. Um, I mean, it's almost almost any significant security improvement, almost any like proof of reserves, for example, almost any significant um, improvement or or functionality was introduced by Binance first and copied by other exchanges. So I, I just think, you know, I think Binance just had their what five or six year anniversary uh, a couple of days ago. And, you know, Binance gets such a bad rap, but I mean, they elevated the game so much. So what are negatives that could come out? I mean, obviously there's likely going to be some there, there has, there is the high potential for there to be some sort of misconduct, with, of course, regards to user funds, which is never, which is is always an issue for almost every exchange out there at some point in time, um, and the, of course, the BNB. So, uh, Bitfinex came out and got hacked, and so they they launched, they released the uh, the the Leo token, which allowed individuals. It was a claim check to get some of their BTC back. Uh, and that was successful for them. So, of course, what is a possibility throughout the course of this investigation? They could find that there's been some sort of misallocation between uh, BUSD that is backing up BNB and the price of BNB. Uh, and some claim, I'm, I'm sure Binance would the exact same thing. They will release some claim token, which will give individuals the ability to earn their money back. And uh, Binance will just continue on, you know, but possibly different. Perhaps they, perhaps this is Binance's Bitfinex moment where they will lose some market share to some other scrappy uh, up and coming exchange hashtag fair desk now all right so we did uh you know we are in the middle of a potential breakout now uh let's uh switch back here sorry so we are potentially in the middle of a, a of a little breakout Okay, we were just identifying this opportunity on the 15 minute time frame. We've been getting higher highs and higher lows. Uh, and I liked this. This is like one of my favorites, right? We've got this previously established range when price consolidates near the zone of breakout, comes down and holds above the 50% 50 mark. Uh, that's, that's typically my trigger uh, to be looking for that opportunity. Now, of course, faders are looking at this exact same moment. They're like, oh, this is the greatest shorting moment of all time. So we'll see. All right, we will see how, how price plays out here in the macro. Um, let's see here. Jushui, yep, I'm sure everything is probably breaking out. Yep, yep, Bitcoin leads the charge. Now, overall, it has, of course, been a rough, excuse me, it has been a rough week for cryptos. Uh, we are down, pretty much everything on the weekly is down across the board, uh, with the exception of Pulse Chain, Solana, and Hex. Leo, which I was just talking about, Bitfinex's little claim check token, uh, that should be a take profit right there. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Copy traders should be happy. Another win in the books. All right. So we are three for three since I've returned from vacation. All right. Three winning trades. All right. Uh, and now we just relax and chill. There's really, uh, there's, there's, there's not too much to do here. Uh, there might be a, I, I probably the next, uh, position that I'll be looking for will probably be a fade at some point in time, uh, just to get my second winning trade in for the day, but not, not bad. And of course, here's the thing. We might have a more powerful breakout on our hands, uh, on the hourly here. Okay. And we've been consolidating down in this range for a little bit. And now we've got this nice expansion to the upside. Yeah, I don't think, you know, 38 is 30,008 is is definitely definitely on the table for today. Uh we'll just see. We'll see if this is going to get faded or if we're actually going to break out. I uh if I think if red candle I will, yeah, if long, if red candle, if big red candle, I will long. Um, and if, if on the other hand, we get like two or three more big greenies, then I'll just wait for the volume spike. See this nice volume spike. I'll see if we can get another one. Uh, and then I'll fade the next, uh, very large volume spike. That will be the, that's, that's going to be the setup.
Uh, Muneg is saying FBTC. Uh, FBTC is having a nice little lower time frame breakout, but again, here's the, like, here's the thing with FBTC, um, FBTC is potentially in a position where it's going to be more profitable to hold Ethereum over Bitcoin for a very short period of time. I talk about this all the time. Um, Ethereum over, this is a theory. This is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart since 2021. Um, Ethereum has not, uh, consistently overperformed Bitcoin. It has been more so for, for, for the investors out there. Uh, since 2021, it has been more profitable to hold Bitcoin than Ethereum. It's been more consistent. All right. Uh, Ethereum has not been able to consistently outperform or overperform uh, Bitcoin. Uh, and there's only been swing trades, punctuated moments in time uh, where, where it actually has been profitable to hold um, uh, to hold Ethereum over Bitcoin. We might be coming up on such an opportunity, uh, but we've got ver the last few rallies have been very weak. Uh, and notice that there is a downward slant to this Bollinger Band. We are, of course, at support. But the last time we got a really significant move uh, was when we kind of broke down below that level of support and tapped liquidity right here. So uh, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about Ethereum right now um, and just continuing to stack Bitcoin. This, uh, this, this is a potential swing trade where you could maybe make us if this does go to the top of the Bollinger Band range, you could make 16 percent, maybe alpha uh, overholding Bitcoin. Um, but you could also just take a Bitcoin trade. All right, uh, we're going to continue on with our weekly analysis here. Uh, yeah, so Ethereum uh, on the weekly time frame uh, does look similar to Bitcoin. It hasn't been as good a year for Ethereum as it has for Bitcoin. Bitcoin uh, has obviously put in some very convincing growth off of its bottom. Um, Ethereum has just been coiling up and chilling, all right, uh, ever since it's kind of low of the bear market. So Ethereum does move a little differently than Bitcoin, but of course is tethered highly, very high correlation coefficient to Bitcoin. Uh, again, consolidation up here at resistance, we typically like to see that. So for Ethereum, very similar. Breaks of 2,120, uh, I think we're, you know, overall, like, let's see, let's just, uh, let's see this last rally, okay? Um, and for this, we really want to see the 382. Uh, we want, yeah, we got the 618, we got the 886. All of these are pretty good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So for Ethereum, I mean, obviously the first target is of course, just going to be the 236, 2404, 2410, we, we could call it. And then the next significant area is up here around 3300 to 3400, uh, and then 4400, getting back to the top of that range. So one thing that some people will do, uh, you can do this with either a trend-based FIB extension. You can also just do this with your drawing tools, um, is measuring from the top to the bottom of the last kind of kind of significant movement and then just putting your cursor on the breakout level okay and then just looking at what's a what's a one-to-one -one breakout right so you just go to the number one so that's the, you're basically saying that if we break out the breakout will be equal to the same the the distance between the low and the high of the previous range okay um, and if that is to occur, we have our initial price target at around 3286.91. So just right there with that 3300. So a nice break from Ethereum here could move us up to 3300. Which I quite like. Again, dropping volume on Binance here as well for Ethereum, which again is not unnatural moving into a consolidating range. Uh, let's see here again, very similar. This is looking not super positive. Uh, we are of course consolidating underneath a Kumo cloud. Uh, we are above pretty much all of our major moving averages. In fact, we just had, um, this is actually a, a 
Yeah, we actually just had a, uh, a TK cross, which is good. And that's quite a bullish uh, cross. The Tenkin Kijun cross is, is quite bullish. Uh, but again, what, what Ethereum is showing here in contrast to Bitcoin is potentially a 12% movement up to test the lower boundaries of the Bollinger Band, right? That 2140 area that I was just talking about, we would kind of want to see the breakout from. Uh, and then rejection, unless we creep into the Kumo cloud and do that edge to edge trade, uh, which is kind of pointing us up at like 26, which is a little bit higher than we were looking at with that 23, uh, 24, 2400 price target earlier, uh, looking at the Fibonacci retracement. So uh, we'll see definitely what happens with Ethereum. Uh, fail, we've had two previous consolidation attempts under, or, uh, not attempts, but uh, successful saviors underneath the 200 period um, weekly moving average here. Uh, sitting at about 1600 right now so that would be our where we're looking at for a downside target if we were to break from this level uh, also note that ethereum does not behave like bitcoin with regards to the four-year cycle it's it's similar but its prices um does not respect the same levels as bitcoin does so i'm going to be a little hesitant that's why i just trade ethereum completely independent i don't look at what bitcoin's doing when i'm wanting to trade ethereum uh unless uh again I, no i don't i uh, from a second degree equation, I guess I do, because I do look at the F Bitcoin chart. The F Bitcoin chart is really all I look at uh, when determining my swing positions in Ethereum. On the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, however, Ethereum is attempting to break above the Kumo cloud. We have a nice successful edge to edge trade and holding the upper boundary of the Kumo cloud here and now going for another breakout. Um, I'm not super excited about this, uh, even though, of course, you know, Bitcoin does make me excited. Uh, Ethereum will, of course, follow along with Bitcoin, but I'm not seeing too much convincing here i mean it's just 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 a bullish play right obviously we had a nice pullback down to the tenkin and the kijun line uh now price is kicking back up nothing really coming in from volume just prices in a nice bullish slant we of course have our kumo cloud just moving up and up and up and up so that's quite bullish uh let's see here looking at our reversal system uh, of course we're not overbought overextended this is a nice pullback play looking for this kind of daily swing back up to retest 1957 uh it's 1960 uh, and then potentially breaking above and pushing for those higher prices. So overall, things are looking pretty good. Pretty good. Ethereum is having a nice, of course, lower time frame uh, daily uh, breakout right here. Uh, moving along with Bitcoin right now, which is quite nice. Um, nothing for me to do right now. I don't feel that this is extended enough for me to fade the movements, although that is where my head is at. And... Hey, Saintsy, good to see you, my friend. B Flow, thanks for coming to the stream, my brother. Oh. Uh, so we've had one successful trade today already. Be nice if we could get a second one. All right, so the weekly charts of Bitcoin and Ethereum are looking pretty good. I don't think there's anything for investors to do. And swing traders are, of course, kind of waiting on a breakout signal or holding current positions. Cardano. I mean, listen, guys, just Cardano is not looking fantastic. Um, all of these altcoins are looking very similar, where I think for, you know, dip buyers, they're looking very cheap. I'm very speculative about picking up cheap altcoins. Uh, unless you fundamentally believe in the project, I typically recommend just waiting for a trigger. Uh, I will share with you guys for free, for free, uh, one of the best, just one of the best strategies out there. All right. This strategy works really good on the weekly time frame. Okay. It also works okay on the daily. All right. Pretty good on the daily. Um, and that's the true strength index. Okay. Uh, this is the only indicator you need for this strategy, just the true strength index. And I get, you know, people just wonder like so much like, Hey, um, when should I like look to buy into, into something? 
And I tip, I don't like the idea of buying cheap altcoins, hot cheap alts. I, I don't like the idea of buying hot cheap altcoins. Uh, when something has been moving down for quite a while, I expect it to continue moving down. If I see something continually moving up, then I'm more of a mind to believe that it will continue to move up. Uh, and I want my investments to move up, gosh darn it. I don't know about you guys. So I personally find it much more comforting, easier and objective to make my altcoin purchases when they are actually going up. And we want to see, you can just use the true strength indicator. If you combine it with volume, it's very good. But just simply using the built-in true strength index on a higher time frame, weekly's good, daily's good, three days good, something like that, two day. Uh, and waiting for that, uh, this is a line cross signal. So we're looking for a quick line or the fast line to cross over the slow line. That is our trading signal. And this lets you get a position in uh, an asset as it is rising. Okay. I'll let you guys figure out the rest of the strategy from there. Uh, do you guys sell if it crosses under before it's meet your profit target? What kind of volume signature do we want to see? Uh, do we want to see a significant level of support? These are all intricacies and complexities that you can add into your strategy to improve your hit rate and to improve your success. Uh, it kind of looks like the chat's a little screwed up, isn't it? Yeah. That's because I have two of them in there. Uh, yeah. Do we want this one? Or do we want this one? I'm thinking this one. No. Yeah. No, no, definitely this one. There we go. Uh, Alex, yeah, eight months of a Bitcoin uptrend and 99% of alts are basically still at the low. No such thing as a cheap altcoin. Yes, this is unfortunately the case. Now, that's not to say there's not a lot of money to be made from trading altcoins. Of course, there's a lot of money to be made from trading altcoins. Um, but the thing about trading altcoins is, I mean, of course, there are just as many strategies out there as you could possibly imagine. I do trade altcoins as well. I, tra I trade swing trades on altcoins. I don't day trade altcoins. But the, the two most successful strategies that I've utilized on altcoins, uh, well, I guess there's th uh, there are, there are three strategies I've used with success on altcoins to make money. Uh, the first is simply utilizing my daily PTP system, my trading strategy to identify potential trending opportunities in altcoin markets. And essentially just what I just showed you here with the true strength index, uh, identify when something is trending or potentially trending buy and hold that coin until the trend ends. That is strategy number one. Um, strategy number two, I guess there's only really two strategies. Yeah. Uh, strategy number two is everything that I lay out in my, how to find 100 X altcoins video. Uh, and this is basically degen trading where you are trying to get in as early as possible on a project, whether that is a pre-sale, whether that's a pre-allocation, whether that's the IDO or ICO, uh, buying almost immediately as soon as it launches on the exchange, minting before anybody else, whatever it might be. And, uh, those things, uh, th those strategies have worked well, the problem or not problem with that, but, but that is a, that's a very different type of trading strategy than, uh, than a technical strategy than a technical strategy. Yeah. Uh, so again, Cardano is looking, uh, again, I hesitate to use the word cheap. It is looking cheap, but uh, yeah. Um, we can, of course, let's see, do we have, is this a, yeah, we made a new low for the year. Okay, great. We even made a new low for the year. Fantastic. Okay. So again, first big target for Cardano is going to be $1.32. Uh, which just from current prices would be like a 300% rally. So again, wait until our opportunity to see prices moving up and then we take some action. 
Uh, Dogecoin looks very similar to Cardano here. Again, just, just, I mean, how low can you go, right? So again, we can do the same strategy, just mark from the top. Is this, yeah, we haven't made a new low for the year. Uh, first significant target for Dogecoin is of course going to be the 31 cent mark, which is another 300% rally. Uh, Polkadot, uh, Polkadot is, you know, here's the thing. Polkadot, I, I was hearing some information about Polkadot recently because apparently uh, we are seeing a big, let's go check DeFi Llama to make sure that that is correct. So from what I understand, Polkadot's just recently launched a lot of interesting stuff and they're seeing a lot of TVL uh, moving there. So let's, I want to look at Polkadot and let's see if that is the case. Okay, so not on Polkadot itself. Uh, DeFi chains. It would probably be like all the way at the bottom then, if that's the case. Yeah, Polkadot. Um, that is very interesting. Uh, what about, hold on a second here. Top protocols. Uh, means. Hmm. I want to see the protocols on polka dot yeah like moonbeam parallel yeah okay here's what i want to see let's see here so moonbeam saying a reduction in tvl so is parallel and aster and akala and interlay and equilibrium Hey, Bedouin. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, B Flow's talking about El Pepe. Uh, we will take a look at Pepe in just a sec. So, let's think here. All right, so let's take a Gandhi at Moonbeam. Uh, explosion of TVL when it launched at the beginning of 2022. Uh, big drop down, secondary, and then yeah, nothing really since then. Um, we do have some protocols that are getting an increase in TVL, but not really significant. I mean, just Orbiter One has only seen an increase in 20% over the last week. So that's potentially something to check out. Uh, Orbiter is a peer to peer lending protocol. They have a little under a hundred thousand um, dollars TVL. Mm. Which and it's a fork of compound. Okay. Let's see here. Um, this is also like you know people also ask me like how hey how can I spot DeFi opportunities? Well, it's the opportunities are where other people are going typically. So when you see big increases in TVL, uh, that, that is your indication that, hey, people are rushing here for some reason. Uh, and, it, and people could be rushing to dump TVL into a chain for a number of reasons. Um, but at the end of the day, it's always going to be financially motivated. There is a financial incentive to move funds to this area. So either they're farming something or they're getting a, a better dividend or a better interest rate for a particular strategy that they're utilizing. APY chasers. Yep. And, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with, with degening into, um, you know, what other people are, are aping into as well. Right. Like ape alone, weak, ape together, strong. So <laughs> I 
So potentially Orbiter 1's something to look into. Uh, but where do we see the largest opportunities here for chains? We just sort by seven day change. Uh, and uh, Grove. Grove seems to be probably where the opportunity is. We've seen a, an Evmos. We've seen a almost we've seen almost a 60% increase in TVL on Grove within the last week. So what opportunities does Grove have? Let's see. Just okay. Grove coin is the protocol. Grove coin GRV is number 722. Uh, launch and then it is just dumped. This thing came out January 2023 and it's pretty much just gone down uh, since it came out. Uh, this thing is on Uniswap, that is on Gate. What do you guys think? Is this a is this a hot cheap alt? So if the only dun, 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 dun. If this is the only thing, so Grove is a chain, Grove coin is the farm. So let's check out their website. Let's check out their website. All right, so we've got Grove swap on Grove chain and we can swap. We can provide liquidity. So it's just a swap. There's no farm. Oh. Hmm. Anybody else know anything about Grove Coin? We've seen, a, you know, a big increase in TVL there over the past week. And the question is why? The only thing to do over there is provide liquidity to this Grove Swap exchange. There's no farming. I mean, are the fees just so delicious? Uh, here we go. TVL. Yeah, the TVL is growing on the Grove chain too. I believe they're connected with Bohemia. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, this is a pretty, this, I'm not going to lie. This is like a pretty juicy token price, right? Yeah, like, you know, pretty much any movement here is going to be like a 50 percenter. Um, kind of have this like last dump. This is kind of the coin that I'd look for an aftershock pump for, right? This is technically an aftershock pump, but um, we'll see. Maybe I'll buy Grove coin. Maybe I'll buy Grove. Uh, I probably have to do that on. I don't want to like. I would rather pay the the thirty dollar fee on Ethereum than go through the headache of swapping to. 
Um, I think it's about time to short, but maybe not yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I might snatch some Grove up. Because if everything's going, if, if everything's going to, if they're seeing that much increase in TVL and the only thing to do on that chain is provide liquidity to the token, then hell, people might just buy the token because they're bored. But it's only, but they have to buy it via, that's not right. Of course they can, they can buy it here. They can swap GRV for Oh, that's it. So you can't even, so if you're on the Grove chain, if you're on the Grove chain, you can't even swap for a different currency. Let me, here, give me a second. I'm gonna try and do this, or this I'm gonna try and do this in my um, actual, crypto profile so I can get into my MetaMask. Give me a second, guys. Oh, whoops. Boom. Sweet. Looks like MetaMask has had like a, like a big update. Okay. Grove seems a complete waste. That's exactly what I like to hear before I make an investment. I can also just buy the coin. I don't have to even be on. I don't even have to be on the. Um, yeah, I don't even need to be on. Grove whatsoever. And just buy it on Ethereum. Uh, yes, yes. Which network? Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm not sure what the fees are or anything, but I can also just buy it on Binance Smart Chain too. There we go. That's interesting. Yeah, swap BNB for Grove. Mm. <laughs> mm. Let's see here. This is Grove USD. We're currently at 22 cents. What are we, we're trying to get to 30 cents, maybe. Also an ERC twenty. This is yeah. This is West Group. So this is the price on 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 F. Okay. So napkin math. Let's go to. Yeah, there's the Ethereum one. Let's go to Uniswap. And we will grab this bad boy. Grove coin. 
And on Ethereum. I think I gotta put some. Let's see. Let's just say we were gonna do that. Okay. So the transaction fee is. Well, it says it's only going to be $6, but we're going to see how much MetaMask actually wants to charge me. Okay, not bad. Only like eight bucks for the transaction fee. So that's 16 for the whole trade, which means if I want price to go from 22, and let's just be conservative here. Screw it, I'm going to say 30. 30%. The minimum I would have to invest would be uh, let's see here. So, I mean, I mean, even a hundred dollars would be fine. You're going to be cutting your profits would be cut in half. So more so probably like a thousand dollars, thousand dollars. If price goes from 22 to 30, uh, or 22, 80 to 30, you're going to make roughly 300 bucks. Um, and sixteen dollars of that is going to be your transaction fee. So yeah, I could see that. So I do think, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, we have a notebook here. All right, so that's trade one. That's a potential swing trade that we're looking at. Um, later on today, I will I'll attempt to try and invalidate this, but you don't want to make things too complicated. I mean, it's as simple as, oh, we see that TVL is increasing on this chain. There's really not much to do on this chain. What are our only options to potentially profit from this increased exposure? Uh, buy the token. All right, so glad that we didn't take the short yet uh this is where we need to be watching oh this is very interesting so big drops in open interest a lot of um a lot of shorts getting their positions closed and we can see yeah so here's the short liquidations coming in right here not too crazy nothing like super insane um, this was a sharp drop in open interest here, though. Uh, so this does look... No, not yet. I mean, we do have everything that we kind of want to see here because we have the volume spike. We have the sharp drop in open interest. CVD is rising. So there's no divergence in volume delta. Let's see here. All right. Um, sorry. I, I realized that I ignored the chat there for a while. Um, there was. Um, uh, let's kind of go back. Minotaur, what's going on, my friend? Sorry that I didn't get to you there for a while. Um, 
do I automate my trades? Yes, I utilize three commas to automate my trades. I have a video on how to do so um, on, our, our, on, our, uh, on our YouTube channel here, uh, how to automate any trading strategy using three commas. Uh, also, do you use the same account for all your different trading strategies? Um, no, uh, not, not so much. Uh, I have separate accounts for all of the different strategies that I have automated, and that allows me to, to manage the risk better or because I have it all in my spreadsheet. I know exactly where everything is. Um, uh, with, and, and then I try to use best practices with regards to my on-chain trading. I try to split things up into smaller positions across multiple wallets. Uh, and I try to keep the majority of my, my crypto in cold storage, uh, if and when I can. And I also use things like CoinJoin, um, to, to protect my anonymity, anonymity and privacy there to the best of my ability. Um, what altcoins am I into right now? Uh, I do publish my portfolio for all the members of the premium trading group. Uh, information on that is down in the description below. Uh, right now, uh, I've just got a few small bags, nothing too insane. I'm mostly just Bitcoin and Ethereum right now to a smaller degree, but mostly Bitcoin. Uh, so th yeah, 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 don't, uh, don't buy the first dip. So don't short the first pump maybe. So yeah, we'll just, we're just going to be patient here. Looks like we might uh, get some continuation from Bitcoin here today. Uh, lock my GRV for 15% APY. No, I don't think I'm going to be doing any uh, any locking. Uh, okay, so there is more. Is there a bridge? Is there a Grove bridge? There's got to be a Grove Bridge, right? Let's go to the... Do they? Do these guys not have a website? Can you guys... Can anybody find a Grove Bridge? Is there, a, is there a Grove Bridge? How are people getting all this? How are people getting their money on the Grove? That's the question that I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, so about $200,000 of liquidity on Ethereum. Okay, so there is significant more liquidity on BSC. Uh, so that's fine. And is it on? Yeah, but here's the thing. It, it, oh, wait, wait, wait. Of course, Uniswap supports. What am I? What am I thinking here? Of course. Yeah, Uniswap supports BNB chain. And that would mean uh, I want this contract address. Grove coin on BSC. And then uh, I think the only problem is, yeah, I don't think I have, uh, what is the market? Um, Where's the, uh, I think it's, it's, is it Unistats or something like that? Um, is it Uniswap info? Yeah. Unis info .uniswap org. That's where it is. Uh, so I want to search for this token on BNB. Nope. Uh, nothing. That's not great. It is, yeah, so it's the same. I'm not seeing it on Ethereum either. No results. That is concerning. Um, yeah, I'm actually not seeing, 
uh, I'm not seeing any liquidity, which is just watch out with multi-chain right now since the last bridge. Yeah, I probably I wouldn't use multi-bridge. I use um uh just Stargate Finance to do cross chain. Layer zero labs all the way, baby. Layer zero labs. Okay. Anyways, I digress. Maybe it'd just be best to buy it on uh, like Mac or whatever. Gate.io. But God, the idea of sending funds to a centralized exchange that I'm not currently using just to buy a coin so I can pull it off and at a later point transfer it back there to sell it. Just, oh my God. Just the idea of that is exhausting. Uh, Alex, thank you. I am looking at the chat above. If you posted a link, um, Alex, I am, uh, I am imbuing you just a second, my brother. I'm imbuing you with the power of the hammer, sir. Alex, you may experience right now a flood of power surging through your veins. Do not be tempted to the dark ways because this power must be utilized appropriately. But you are now a channel moderator, my friend. You are now a moderator of the chat, imbued with all the powers of those who have come before you. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can post the link now, but uh, if not, just DM it to me. Our Discord's crazy right now. Okay, uh, so... Grove coin on the table. Ooh, okay. Is it time? Uh, volume spike, not a sharp drop in open interest. I, ooh, there were a lot of liquidations right there. A lot of short liquidations on that candle. But I didn't see a big drop in open interest corresponding with those. Even though we had a lot of liquidations, we saw a lot of people buy their positions. So I don't think I'm going to do it. I mean, this is like obviously an area to take a short, right? Excellent. Thank you so much, my friend. Copy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Just, no, just copy. Oh, cool. I didn't realize you could do that. Excellent. Oh, okay, cool. So we can bridge from FBNB or GRV. Uh, looks like it's just a little bit more expensive on the BNB chain, but you're also going to be paying significantly lower fee, so it's actually probably cheaper in the long run. Staking. What do we got? Earn GRV, stake GRV, earn GRV, stake GRV. So they've got a couple different like staking pools. Farming. Oh, okay. So you can farm. And you're farming what GRV? If you're farming GRV, then that's downwards price pressure on on, on growth coin. That's weird. That's weird. Like, is the APR, like, even decent? You guys can't see it right now because I'm over here, but... Let's try connecting my meta to the website, and we'll see what happens. Uh, it is, like, it is 116% APR. 1% uh, withdrawal fee. So that is kind of interesting. I do see the bridge. Okay, so again, you know, typically the most successful yield farmers will get into a farm, will ape into a farm. Uh, yeah, farm and dump tokens. APR is 11680. 
but here's the thing. I think to farm, right? To, to, to farm. Yeah, to farm, you've got to stake. And then you, you, you stake your LP tokens. Okay, so yeah. So I would just do the... I would just do the flexible staking. I would do the farm and I would dump tokens. So 116. Okay, hold on a second. One second, one second, one second. How can I calculate daily profits if I know yearly APR? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So So let's say let's say we have $1,000 times 1.168, which is the interest rate or the APR offered from the from the protocol. Uh, which means we'll make a hundred. No, 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 no. Yeah. Which means we'll make $1,168 per year. So if we divide that by 365, we're going to make $3 and 20 cents a day. So for every thousand dollars you. Wait a second. That's just from the farm. Yeah, so for every $1,000 worth of LP tokens you stake, you're going to earn $3.20 a day. On top of the, if we do the flexible staking, we're going to be earning 15% per year. So we take that same $1,000 times 0.15, we're going to be making $150 per year, divided by 365, making 41 cents a day. So for every thousand dollars, you're going to be making roughly three dollars and sixty cents a day. And so you just need to figure out at what point is that worth your time because you're going to be paying fees in and out. So is it valuable for ten thousand? Because that's going to be three twenty times ten. You're making thirty two dollars a day. So thirty two dollars a day with a ten thousand dollar investment. Uh, the problem with the $10,000 investment is that price is volatile. So if price drops, what, 20%, you have lost $2,000. And that would have taken you $2,000 divided by 32. 62 days. It would take you 60 days of farming and staking to make up for a 20% drop in price. So... So I think the only thing on the table really then is, uh, is the trade, is the trade. Okay, well, we're gonna just, just keep pushing on right past with that. Uh, we were looking for opportunities on Polkadot, but um, yeah, I don't know guys. Hey, wait a second, let's, yeah, okay. So that was not the time to take the short. Uh, we do still have, yeah, CVD is still rising. Uh, the short liquidations pretty much got eaten up and yeah, open interest is continuing to move up. Now that doesn't mean that we won't dump here. So I hear open interest remained flat right here as price was moving down. Um, so yeah, I think we are coming up. Of course, the trade that I am looking for today is this fade. We already took the breakout trade and caught the first little bit of that. So that was good. Um, Yeah, I think we're getting very, very close to where we want to be.
Thank you, guys. Let's take a gandy here. Yeah, we had a big and the CBD started moving down. Thing here. Did we know? It? No, it wasn't actually until after. Yeah, oh, I had already been moving down. So we see something very different here. We actually see some strength in this rally. All right, well, that's all we're going to do for right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we've got for today. Thank you guys so much. I want to appreciate everybody for coming to today's exciting episode of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. You guys are, of course, the fuel to keep this channel going. We really appreciate all of your support. If you guys have not already, if you're watching us on YouTube, smash that like button like it owes you six Satoshis and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a daily episode or any of our weekly tutorial videos on improving your trading ability. I highly recommend you go grab my free guide, The Five Mistakes Holding You Back from Profitable Trading. Link in the description, fivemistakes.crackingcryptocurrency.com. I've distilled years of wisdom into this free, simple, easy to follow guide that can help you improve some of the mistakes you're probably making in your trading. If you guys are interested in more hands-on approach to improving your trading, consider joining our premium trading group and learning how to master cryptocurrency trading with us. And you can go copy trade me on Fairdesk. Link is also in the description. So until tomorrow, guys, same crypto time, same crypto network. I will see you then. Remember to trade safely and manage your risk. Cheers, guys. Thank you.